All right, we're still at Blade Show 2023. We're at Maleo Knives. We've got this man, Brandon. He's just chilling if you come by. I don't know if you're gonna get a knife or a glass of whiskey, but either way, it's gonna be a good time. I wanna let you know a little something before I got a chance to meet this guy. I had already been on his website. I'm a culinary guy. This guy makes culinary knives, but he's the only guy that I knew that started doing it with the Magna Cut that I recently got to sharpen. So I'm super excited about what else he's doing and to hear more about Magna Cut in the culinary world. Please tell us what you brought to Blade Show. What's going on with this company? Yeah, so uh, I brought a bunch of stuff. I bought a bunch of um, semi-custom. So it's basically my production line, but with customizations, um, different types of handles, koa, resin burls, things like that. Uh, as far as customs, it's a little hard for me to keep anything in stock. Uh, I got a tuna sword. This is a uh, full tang, 19 inch or 20 inch long blade. This is CD number one. The kanji on here just reads "Made in America." Uh, it's got a full ur on the backside, um, but yeah, this is olive wood CD one. That's three V. Uh, CD number one. It's uh, 63 HRC. Sorry. And then I've also got a left-handed Yanagi bite a CD number one as well. It's desert ironwood. Um, the tuna sword sold. The Yanagi is available. I'm hoping for a, a lefty that usually doesn't get much love from Japan to be able to take that home and actually get to <laughs> have a left-handed Yanagi bite. And I got a bunch of other stuff here, and a uh, bunch of stuff's already gone. But what steel do you primarily work with? Well, it kind of depends. You know, my Magna Cut, I think, is the absolute greatest chef knife steel if what you're looking for is low maintenance, high toughness, um, just the best thing you can have for most everyday users or you're in a fast-paced kitchen. CD number one is the only steel I like more than Magna Cut, but only for certain things. So CD number one has the highest toughness at 63 HRC. Um, now, it has lower abrasive wear resistance, and some folks think that high abrasive wear resistance is a really important thing for edge retention. Um, I'm not one of those people. I think that if uh, high abrasive wear resistance was such a big factor, then SM100 would hold a much better edge because it blows everything else out of the water for abrasive wear resistance. But when you're cutting through salmon or fish or anything like or, uh, beef, vegetables, you don't abrade the edge away. Typically, you're getting microchips in there. And so that's why, for me, I go CD number one. I go ultimate hardness. So it scores the highest on Sharpie impact tests, anything like that, at 63 HRC. So it's very hard, very tough. And the lower abrasive wear resistance, to me, just means that it sharpens even easier. So it holds a better edge and is easier to bring back to life. So I, I love that steel but personally. There's, but there's, is it just so I know, is that still a stainless steel or does it get a patina? So it's kind of interesting. CD number one is similar to 3V and PD number one in that it has um, between 7 to 8.5 percent chromium depending on that family. Right, below the 13 stainless requirement. But it's, it's, it would be considered a carbon steel, but it won't patina. It's actually got quite a bit of corrosion resistance considering. So Semi stainless? I mean, what does that term really mean? It means it has a chance to, I guess. I, I mean, the, the hard thing is, is because there isn't a uniform classification, it's tough for me to say. So I'll say it's carbon. The people who love Japanese will just say it's a semi-stainless, maybe. I'm willing to say CD number one has 8.5% chromium. There you you call it what you want. I do want to <laughs> ask, you're the first American knife maker that I've seen making culinary knives that I saw a Shinogi line on. Yeah, I, I am. I have not seen a Shinogi line on any of the American stuff. I'm used to the 50/50 bevel. I'm not used to Shinogi line. The grind on that looks amazing. Um, and this higher grind is very popular right now, especially with the Japanese knives. So I looked at that and I'm like, you were already doing it. So before they already switched to their grind, you already have it going on. Um, so none of this is cladded. This is all one steel with a secondary bevel. Like we have the Shinogi has a primary and a secondary bevel. Right. But when I see that finer edge coming out, this is still all mono steel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really just want to use the absolute best thing in the world. Even Damascus steel for me is always a weird thing because what you're doing is you're saying, well, I made a knife out of the best steel I possibly could and something that isn't. Okay. Now, there's reasons to do that. Now, if you're doing Yanagi buzz and you want to sharpen it in the traditional way, it takes a lot more time if all the way up to the Shinogi, it's that really hard abrasive wear resistant steel. So I understand that. That being said, 
I have a ton of my Yanagis in actual kitchens. And most of the time when I see people who are using them every day, not just my Yanagis, most Yanagis end up with a secondary bevel. It's just the nature of things. It's way easier yes. to just put a secondary bevel on it and not try to blend the coba and try to make it look all pretty. These guys are just trying to pay their bills and feed their families. Yeah. And so I really resonate with that. So the idea of trying to do a cladded steel in, the, in an attempt to make it easier to sharpen things in the traditional way, knowing that no one's going to do it anyway, no I think do we'll just way. make it all good steel. And if you ever sharpen all the way through that ura, and I need to put another ura on there, I'll just do that. Okay. Now, now, you're, now you're your Yanagi bow lasts 10 times as long. But when I look at your knives, I see a flat grind with a sec with a with another bevel, right? It's not a true flat grind. Well, I my the if, you, if you look at my Yanagis, I mean, that's... You, that's a that's, that's a, a flat from the Shinogi. Yeah. When I look at the other knives, and I see the shiny chromish reflection on the edge, that's a that's not a true flat grind, right? It's a flat right, and then right. another bevel. Yeah. Uh, and that's typical for your Yuto chef knives. Yeah. Yeah. And then other than the chef knives, the Yanagi and then this tuna, are we are we doing a sujihiki? Are we doing pairing? Are we doing anything? I don't have a sujihiki yet. Um, I've got a petty in the works. Uh, as far as right here, all my all my pairing knives are gone. I only got one more offset fillet. This is probably, and I sold out all my 6.5s, but my offset um, fillet knife is one of my favorite knives. It's a little bit stiffer than a traditional fillet. Oh, wow. yeah. Uh, but what I love about it is I got tons of folks using this to break down beef. It's so narrow that getting underneath silver skin and cleaning hanging Absolutely. tenders, Absolutely. any kind of tenderloins, it just it just shreds all that kind so of this stuff. This is basically an offset Off Sujihiki. Well, and you know, a lot of people were curious. I, I did it as a drop down, and you can see there's like a little choil right there, which means it's easy to sharpen right off of the edge. Okay, yes. But it doesn't have a sharp heel, so if if you mistakenly get your whole hand inside of a fish, you're not going to tear things up with a sharp heel. Okay. So that was very intentional. A lot of folks like to hold this like a steering wheel. You know, it's kind of nice. I it, see. And it doesn't have that weird lead in when you're sharpening it like a lot of the fillet knives have with the guard that they use. So it drops it down a little bit. It just, it's just really nice. I actually only for the first time brought one home a couple, uh, a couple weeks ago and I was you know, I, I do all my homework, but when I go home and actually get to play with it, sometimes I find out, I'm like, hey, I really did a pretty decent job on this. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the, the last couple of things I'll mention are I see a uniform handle design as far as ergonomics, and then I also want to ask about the coloring of the dark on the steel as well as the pattern, whether it's printed or lasered. So, if you could touch on the handle first. You've yeah. got one handle design uh, ergonomically that you like that handle shape. Well, I'll say I got so this this is more of a wa inspired, but um, the reason why I like these facets is you. If you look at your fingers, you got finger bones. You're not an octopus, you know. And so what I really want is when I'm pushing through something, I don't want it to um, to twist on me. And so for me, it's really important to index well as you're going through things for it to not turn on you. So that's really why I like these facets. Um, I like it to swell right here. If you're doing a pinch grip, it's filling in that right there. Your your pinky's not floating out. If you really needed to, to, to rock on the heel, it's brought up enough so you're not going to hit the cutting board. Everything about this I feel like is very functional. I, yeah, I taper in the fronts right there so that as I do the pinch grip, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm holding right where I want to hold. It's, uh, yeah, I really like these handles. I think a lot of people see them and don't understand the comfort of them until they pick it up and they go, oh, everything actually does make sense. Now, if you do want to hold it back, it's still really good. Uh, it's not really the proper way to hold a knife, but I, look, you, you know, I, I don't want to design things specifically for people to do things incorrectly, so I just want them to be real comfortable. And so I, around the spines, around the inside finger choil, it actually brings the heel back just a little bit, and that was intentional. I wanted people to be able to do push cut, pull cut, rock, any kind of... Um, yeah, I do want to point out that there's plenty of plenty of area for that flat chop, and then there is a roundness for the belly. It's not over-pronounced, so you can get your rock, you can get your chop, all the techniques can be done. And then, so we, we see uh, a dark color on the blades. Does that come with the metal? So, uh, so I've got some blades that are DLC coated. So that's diamond-like coating. That's SP2 and SP3 carbon molecules that are 
put in a vacuum chamber and um, they're bombarding the surface of the steel and they actually impregnate themselves inside the surface of the steel. So it's not some kind of spray on like Cerakote or anything that's going to wear off into your food. It's literally just carbon molecules. So it's FDA approved. It's super hard. It's applied via uh, particle vapor deposition is what PVD is. Wow. And so it's a, it's a high tech process. It's not going to interfere with your food. It's, uh, it lowers the coefficient of friction. It offers some um, corrosion resistance. I think it's a really good coating if you want a coating. I think aesthetics, it's just beautiful. It's only two microns thick, so it's not something that's going to change the grind lines. And I'm always trying to, I know some people look at my knives and they say, I can see grind lines. And I think, good. Even on my Yanagis, when you look on the Uras, like I don't hand sand those grind lines well, out. I'm used to seeing those on my Japanese knife. I'm used to the grind lines on the yeah. Ura. It's a little bit more polished on at the top, on the flat area, but on the actual Uroshi, like I'm used to seeing that. And, and usually they're in, in, the, in the in this direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they, yeah, they do a they do like an angle when they're doing theirs, and so the angle's a little different on mine. But the goal for me is. I, I kind of don't want to hide anything. So I'll notice a lot of guys will blend things in to kind of hide inconsistent angles. And I, I hate that. Like, if I did a terrible job with a Shinogi line, I feel like I should be held accountable for that. <laughs> so Is that more of like a scotch bright kind of a finish on the edge of that? Well, on the production knives, I've got straight up machine ground finish, and then I hit it with scotch bright wheel with compound because I'm trying to lighten it up a little bit. But having those lines in there actually is going to aid with food release. Trying to make a mere polished surface just creates it a, a vacuum. Okay. So I, there's no reason to get that out. And it certainly isn't going to hurt the corrosion resistance on Magna Cut to have a few grind lines in there. So it's, it's aiding in food release. To me, it shows the consistency of the grind. And I don't see any reason to take it out. So I could spend more money and time and effort trying to polish them out. But I just think, why? I want these things to just get the you know get the hell beaten out of them in a real kitchen even okay. if they are pretty so so the last thing is we see designs yeah. on the knives what so is, what's that about so i've got the cuchillo de la muerte is the ones with the calavera the sugar skull and the serape handles the mexican blanket um i i know i don't look like it but i'm actually mexican <laughs> so like for me that was nostalgic because i thought about like my grandmother and uh the, the the blankets that she had and kept us warm and then uh how is the application of the of the art put on there yeah so that's laser so i've got a 50 watt fiber laser so i apply that i think it looks really good when i do dlc and then laser because it gives it a really nice color contrast but i like the satin with the laser as well i've got the calypso that's the one with the mermaid and the blue handle um i've got a few other variants i typically just have some one-offs that i'll take to shows but yeah the the laser is uh you know it's it's embedding into the steel it's in a very durable coating and being the dlc so it's not going to wear off i mean yeah i suppose if you did scotch bright and just scrub the hell out of it you might start to you know make so it if look you send it to a guy to polish your knife or mess with your knife you don't have to worry about it just coming right off yeah i mean daily washing and regular use you're not going to ever wear that out so all right, and, and just curious, the last thing I'll ask you is, if someone was getting a custom knife, if you had time for that, could they send in like a design to be laser etched into there? So I, I got a little burnt out doing customs. I was at the point where I had over 300 knives on order. So currently I'm not taking customs, but what I would say, as far as customs are concerned, I'm more interested doing fun things. So if you told me that you wanted a, a left-handed unagi sake or something, I'd be like, oh, that's crazy. I'd love to make that. Or uh, something fun, I'm more inclined to say yes to. But I, I don't want to have but 20 a busy man. tenant chefs. Not, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, we had fun with Brandon at the show. This is still, this is, sa this is Saturday. <laughs> There's still like a little bit of time tomorrow to get to the show. We appreciate everything here is for sale. Uh, sword soul. There's a few things sold, but yeah, I got a lot for sale. And then how will they get yourself? Is just the Melio.com, MelioKnives.com? Yeah, MelioKnives.com is uh, our regular website. And then if you sign up for our newsletter, that's how you'll um, be alerted when we have drops. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Have fun at the Blade Show. Thank you. And we guys just stick around for more content, more from Blade Show 2023. God bless.